Hey guys, welcome back. We have some rainbow lorikeets this morning. It's a bit of a rainy, overcast, windy day with the cyclone off the coast of Queensland still. They're very noisy, aren't they? Very noisy little birds. They're very active, they're very cute. They're uh, getting into the cockatoo's breakfast. <laughs> They're such little birds, they, um, they're pushing the big cockatoos around. It's really funny to watch. There's a whole heap of them over in the tree over there. They're a little bit shy because I'm out here, but there was about 20 before, all sitting on the deck. Hopefully some more will come over. There's a few more. The cockatoo's not sure, really sure what to do. They say, hey, it's my breakfast. Go get your own. You've got to play nice together, don't you guys? All right. Just thought I'd show you those little rainbow lorikeets. Lorries, we call them. They're, they're basically uh, nectar eaters. They eat the nectar from the flowers, the blossoms. But they do enjoy seeds as well, so they come and help themselves to the cockatoo's food. Cockatoo's not impressed, as you can see. Okay, back to pouring. G'day guys, welcome back again. Before I get started today, I'll show you the results of my... One of my previous pours, this was the first flip and dip I did, so nice and dry now. Dried beautifully, hasn't really changed from when I poured it. Uh, the paints tend to go a little bit darker, but um, still really pretty. And if you put a coat of clear varnish on that, those colours really come up and will pop again. So that's it there. That was the one and a half parts pouring medium to one part paint. So I haven't got really beautiful cells. My mix was a little bit on the thin side. So my next video, I'll show you the next one where I did the thicker mix. And you can see the difference. It's much better in the way the cells have developed. Okay, so today, continuing with my three flip cups in the different colours. So the first one I did was the blue one. Then I did the purple one. Then I did the green one and the brown one. And today is... Turquoise, so all shades of turquoise from a really light turquoise all the way up to a really dark turquoise and then black and white as well. So all of them have had five colours in different shades plus black and white. So seven colours, 50 grams of pouring medium, 50 grams of paint in each cup, that's 700 grams which is 23 ounces of mixed paint. And I've got my 70% glue, this is Elmer's Glue All, but I found any white craft glue will work, and 30% water. So I just put 700 grams of glue and 300 grams of water in my jug there, in my bottle I should say. Okay, so uh, for cells, same as usual, same as I've done for the others, three drops of treadmill silicone in each, except for the black and the white. So, one, two, three... One, two, three, in you go. You don't need to squeeze these bottles at all. You'll find if you squeeze them, you'll get way too much. You'll get about 20 drops. So just hold it up and let the drips fall out on their own. Now, really good stir. Wipe the sides, really good stir again. Really good stir, wipe the sides. You really want that paint, to, the silicone to get all the way down to the bottom, not just sit on top. So a good stir. The black and the white, I put 60 grams of pouring medium and 50 grams of paint because I know that the black and white thicken up a lot. I might even have to add a bit of water. I'll oh, see how it goes. Hopefully it'll be all right. The turquoise, I had to add an extra 15 grams of paint because the turquoise is really, really thin. The others, 50-50. I haven't had to change them. So the black and the white, more pouring medium and the turquoise, more paint. 
All right, let's start layering. So black first. And then I've split my colours with some white. So dark, light, dark, light, dark, light, and then the blue, and then we'll go back around to the black. So this is my, my lightest turquoise. It's called Marina. Very pretty colour. Hopefully it won't go too grey looking against the black, but I needed a light colour to go against the black. And now we've got the darker turquoise to sit on top of that light turquoise. And hopefully I'll get some dark turquoise rings, or cells I should say, with some light turquoise rings around them. So that's why you want your two colours next to each other to be opposite, light and dark, so that your cells will really stand out. No point having, you know, these two colours next to each other. There's not enough difference in those shades for the cells to really stand out and look pretty. This is my darkest one. It's called Deep Sea. It's a really dark turquoise, bluey green. And of course, turquoise is a bluey green colour. It's not blue, it's not green, it's kind of in the middle. So shades of aqua or turquoise. This one on the end needs a little bit more paint. These two are quite similar, these two colours I'm putting next to each other, so hopefully that won't be an issue. And back to the black. I made up a little bit of extra black because I wanted to have enough just to finish off my layers with some black. Hopefully there's enough left in there for one more layer. Actually, I probably don't have enough of this one. I'll skip the middle one and put something else in there. I want to have enough of each colour so that you can actually see it. If you don't have enough of each colour, it kind of just blends into the other colour and you lose your individual colours. So this is my light one. I'll put this one in on top. Of that. So there's not much left in that one. And then we'll go for the darker one again. This little end cup here is missing out. It hasn't got very much in it. Well, not as much as the others have anyway. Okay, one, two cups down, eh? Let's do some white. sticking to me. So I'm going to do the same as I did with my second flip and dip. Did you see that one? I tilted my, oh, flipped my cups over and then I, instead of torching straight away, I tilted to cover half the canvas and then I torched, and I was really happy with that. Uh, I didn't, get my cells didn't overstretch. So I'm gonna do that again. And I'm thinking this might be the way to go, but we'll have a look. When I did the blue, the purple, the green, and the brown, I just flipped the cups over and torched straight away. So this one, I guess, will be a little bit different, and I'll just see how I go. I don't think there's enough left of this to do two layers, so I'll just do a little bit in that one. This one's already got it. A little bit in that one. Okay. Now, this blue, how much have I got of this one? that all in the middle you know why not I can have a little bit more of the bluish turquoise right in the middle and then I'll just top them off with some black hopefully I've got enough black to go around I 
don't think I have. I'll have to get some more black from my leftover stock from yesterday from the workshop. Got a little bit of black left over, so I'll just grab that so that I can put a bit on the end cup. I just keep it underneath the big cup so it stays fresh, nice and easy. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy as they say. There we go. Let's pop that back over. It's not much left in there, but it's worth keeping. You never know when you're going to need it. Okay, so I've got a little bit more paint in the middle one, which is it's okay. Where's my middle section there? Okay, I'm hoping it's not going to be too turquoise. You know, I want some, I know it's all turquoise, but I'd like some variations of colour. I want the white to show through, I want the different shades of turquoise to show through. So that's the lightest. I'll show you lightest to darkest. That's the marina and peacock. You can see the difference there. Well, there's not much difference, but there is a little bit. And then there's the coastal turquoise and regular turquoise. Deep sea, that's that really dark greeny blue one. And then black and white. So that's the colours. Okay, and it's released already. So, let's do this. Oh, I love those striations. <gasps> so pretty. And I found that going one, two, three works the best for me instead of having one down here and two up there because then I get this like hourglass effect or wine glass effect that I really don't like. So I just let all the paint fall out and then I just tilt it to where I want it to go. And I found that that just works brilliantly. Look at that nice bit of black just there. Off you go, go and visit your neighbour. Oh, that's a lot of black. Where did that come from? So caps are really nice and empty. I shouldn't hold that over there, should I? It might drip. It's naughty. Okay, so not going to torch at the moment. I can see some air bubbles and things, but what I want to do is I want to cover half the canvas first. So I'm going to go with this because this is the biggest area that I need to cover. And I've got the most amount of paint on the surface that I'm ever going to have. So We'll use that to my advantage and cover that side first. Now I've got paint all over my gloves. Let me wash my hands. Oh, I'm really liking those colours. I'm so glad I made up a little bit of extra black. Well, hopefully it'll stay looking brilliant like that. Spread that over a bit. Now I'm going to use my stick because, and as I said, I need to keep as much paint on the surface as I can. This is 700 grams and I've made just enough. I found if I make too much paint, these side ones come into the middle and then I only have a little bit of middle section and I have a, a big side section. So this has been working really well for me, cutting down on the amount of paint. So zigzag back and forth. And before I lose that over there, I'm going to catch it with the stick. And do you remember when I used to pour extra paint up the sides and then I used to get that horrible wiggle? I've stopped doing that. And so I have a really nice just a flow over, a continual flow over. So that's why I've stopped doing that and I'm happy that I did. Alrighty. And it can go over. That I will just do that with. Um, I think I lost quite a bit of paint over there, didn't I? Love these colours. <gasps> Gorgeous. I'm going to pick some of this up. I'm going to put it over here. Can't really 
everybody see what I'm doing? So I'm put that there for now. And I'm going to help this over. So once you've started your pour, don't rush it. Stop. Take your time. Look at what you need to cover. You don't have to go tilt, 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 tilt over and you've lost half your paint. Just take your time. Slow down. There's no rush. So I need to get a little bit over here if I can. And I need to put that back to save some of that paint because I don't want to lose it all off the side. And then while I'm tilting this way, I'm going to tilt down and we're going to get that at the same time. So watch both of those sections. And over. Beautiful. Did it. See? Easy peasy. Lemon squeezy. Okay, so now half the canvas is done. So this is where I'm going to torch. And then I'll flip the canvas around. Actually, I'll flip it around now. Might as well. Flip it around now. And give it a torch. And then I only have to worry about stretching my cells once, <laughs> not twice. Because I've already gone over that one side, so let's go. Round and round in circles, don't get too close. If you get too close, you'll get caterpillars. Nice, broad heat. A wide heat, I should say. getting too close. See my paint's thinned out a little bit now because I've stretched it. So because I've stretched it the silicone might have already kind of popped up to the surface so that's one of the little sort of drawbacks I guess but let's just see how that goes. Because as the paint's moving the silicone's going to pop up. So I probably torched a little bit too much naughty naughty. It's hard to tell on these colours because they're not really um, that different. So I couldn't really see what was happening under here because it's all turquoisey. But I like how these two are more black and then it sort of frames that middle one. We've got some really pretty white cells here. There's an eye. I've got my eye on you. Just going to give that a minute to do what it wants to do and then I'll start tilting. I'm dripping down the back here so I'll just move that a bit. Where else do I want to torch? I don't think I want to torch anymore. I think that's enough. Oh, this bit here is a bit blank. Let's just do that. If I can, just get in there. I'll go up really high. Even that was a bit close. See them all popping up there? That's enough though. Just that little bit. Happy with some background. I like my background. Isn't that pretty colours though? So if you've been having trouble with your cells overstretching, give this a go. Tilt half your surface first. Now I've only got you know these two to do. Which should be alright. Um, I will try and I haven't even got any paint. I've hardly got any paint left. Actually, no, I have got quite a bit there, haven't I? It's tipped over. Couldn't see that there. There is a bit there. I might pick up a bit of that and put it in the middle. It just helps the paint flow if the canvas is a little bit wet. I'm just going to pop that there. It won't be staying, it will be going, so don't worry about it being messy won't stay I hope probably should have put some black there shouldn't I but it's certainly going to be easier than having to you know tilt the whole thing and lose my cells that I've already got so this in theory should work it might not I could be wrong but give it a go hey all right my cells as you can see this I've given it a few minutes the cells have grown they're looking gorgeous right let's 
let's go. I'm a little bit concerned that I put that there now instead of the black, but I can tilt it and if I don't like it, I can scrape it off and I've got my extra black there waiting, waiting in the, the lines. Now, again, take your time. There's no rush. See, I've already gone over that section there already that I've added in, so it's not a problem. The problem is trying to get over here. I'm going to put a bit of black on that corner and get my lid off. I'm going to go around here and just put some black on this corner just in case I can't get around there. I'm not going to ruin the whole composition and bend all my lines to get half an inch in the corner. It's just not on. Okay, what I'm going to do, put my little lid back on. And I don't actually mind the black. Could have done with more black. I like that. It's a bit there. There's not much black in the middle. I'm going to bring it back a little bit because I want to change direction and go to that corner. Come back, change direction. Now, can I get back to that other corner? Not really. Okay, no, I'm not going to. I'm not going to force the matter. That corner can stay as it is. Not worth it. Not worth ruining a whole painting to get to that corner. I'll torch it and that'll have a few cells in it and you won't even know. I'll know and you guys out there in YouTube land will know but <laughs> it'll be fine. I could, I could, shall we try? I just risk the risk losing all this gorgeousness, that's all, by going over there. Let's see what happens. I'll take the white back into the middle. I can't talk, I can't even breathe. Go you good thing. Oh, I did it, okay, that's enough. Now I'm gonna straighten up my lines. Actually, that's okay. Yep, that's all right. I didn't ruin anything. Um, now, where do I need to? So I need to move my composition down a little bit, like so. Actually, no, it's a bit busy there. It needs to come back this way, just a touch. Ever so slowly. is it and do I want a torch I'm going to torch just a tiny bit just just in there because just because that's a bit blank there and I've got that big blob but that's all that's all I'm going to do I don't even need to do that really had it on really low just to get just a few little cells one, two, three, four, five, six. There's six cells popping up there. How's that looking? My line's bent a touch, but it's okay. I need to straighten it, don't I? It's not, that's the OCD in me. I need to straight, straighten that line up just a touch. Okay. I like it. I'm happy with that. And there's a little bit of dark just here. I'm just going to grab a few, few in there. I said I wasn't going to, but you know. I don't mind a few little ones here and there with the bigger ones, the cells. I quite like it. Different sizes. So what do you think? Is that a good result? Um, tilting halfway first. I think so. My cells maybe aren't as huge as they are on some pores, but it's a trade-off. 
the cells that I have got, even though they might be a tiny little bit smaller, they are really nicely shaped. It's, it's quite busy actually. Um, I could have, could have had less cells. I say that after each pour, you know. Maybe I should just cut down on my oil. Although it's, it's really not the amount of oil I found. It's the amount of torching. It's the heat that brings these cells up brings the oil to the surface with your cells. So I find it's the amount that you torch. So if you don't want so many cells, don't torch so much. Just let a few pop up. I want some dark there for the corner. Okay. Look at those. One, two, three, four. Right on the very edge. Looks like a weird sea creature looking at me with four eyes never seen that before. Cells sitting right on the very edge. How bizarre is that? Oh, I love it, you guys. So, turquoise, there you go. All shades of turquoise. Five shades of turquoise, plus black, plus white. Radio. I'll get my gloves off, take you in for a close-up. Love it. My messy hands. Right. And then, I'm going to go and get dinner started. There we go, close up. Now I'll take you down so that you can see the whole thing. Really like this one. Oops, zoom out a bit so it can fit the whole thing in the frame. I haven't lost too much paint, like there's a little bit there. There's, I guess there's a relative amount down there. There's not a huge amount. Where are those four little googly eyes? There they are, look at those four little googly eyes on the left. Okay, here we go. Oops, hopefully that wasn't too fast for you. Okay, start over here. Pretty, pretty cells. I'm glad I haven't lost the white. Sometimes the white really gets lost, but it hasn't. The cells have got nice either white rings around them or they've got the pale turquoise, the marina around them. Look at those up there on the left in the middle there. How gorgeous are those? white rings. Look at that. White rings around turquoise. So pretty. There is a bit of a caterpillar there. What are you doing there caterpillar? Hey, did I get a bit close there? I must have. I've got quite a lot of cells in that section there so I probably got a bit close. So here where the caterpillar is, I've got that nice dark greeny blue colour showing through. I don't mind the segregated caterpillars like that. It's the big blobby worms that just look awful when you don't stir your silicone enough. I really dislike those ones. But the segmented caterpillars, they just look like you know cells joined together. So I can live with them. Alrighty, and back again. Now, what colour will I do next? Any requests? I've done blue, purple, green, brown, turquoise, pink. Should I do lots of pinks and magentas? I haven't done that yet. I guess it's kind of similar to the purple, but it will be more pink and magenta. So maybe, maybe I'll do that. Um, and I still need to do the oranges, but I'm not looking forward to doing the oranges. I don't think they'd be that attractive, really. So there she is. Have you enjoyed that video? I must try to torch less. It's really still quite busy, isn't it? Yell at me next time, guys. Don't torch so much. It's hard to do. It really is. Um, okay, so have a go at this. Tilt, or tip your cups over. Tilt to cover half your canvas first, then torch. Then you don't risk losing or overstretching your cells as much. See, they're all pretty good. I think it's worked well so I'm no doubt going to continue this as I said I'm still learning with every pore and I'm going to continue um, 
flipping, tilting half, torching, and then tilting some more because I think that works really well. So have a go at it. All right, I'll see you for the next one. Bye for now.